Greetings. It's wonderful to be worshiping with you again on this fifth Sunday of Easter, May 10th, 2020. We're worshiping today in our chapel, and we have some special uh, features from our Jubilate kids who will be giving a special presentation. We'll also be having readings from a couple of our Jubilate kids, the uh, epistle reading and the prayers of the people on this Mother's Day weekend. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us stand and sing hymn 711, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we will have our reading this morning from 1 Corinthians by Sadie Ray James, followed by our jubilate anthem, What Then Will God Do With Me? If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but I do not have love, I am the only resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, I do not have love, but I do not have love, I, gave no, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it does not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily arranged, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, also preserves. Love never fails, but when there are prophecies, they will cease. When there are tongues, they will be silenced. When there is knowledge, it will be passed away. For we know in part, we will prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in the mirror. We shall see face to face. Now I know in part, and then I shall fully, even as I am full grown. And these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all of these is love. Amen. Oh, 
of wind makes a wave in the sea. A very small sea makes a very large tree. What then will God do with me? What then will God do with me? Think of these things, these glorious, marvelous, miraculous, astonishing, bewildering, exceptional, fabulous, incredible, phenomenal, remarkable, staggering, spectacular, wonderful things that God can do with me. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Now may the words of my mouth, may the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I think many of us are sensing that we're finally entering a period of transition in this crisis that we are in that we're beginning to see a light at the end of this tunnel of separation. We don't know yet when that tunnel will end, but there is hope that we are approaching it. And if that is the case, then now is our time to prepare for life on the other side of that tunnel. But what exactly are we supposed to be preparing for? We're hoping for life to go back to normal, but we don't know what the new normal will be. But maybe we shouldn't just be preparing to go back to normal, because we've just learned that what is normal can easily be taken away. Maybe we're supposed to prepare for something beyond normal, for what can't be taken away. It seems to me that this whole world has just been forced to undergo a type of death and resurrection. So it may be that a new resurrection really is coming out of all of this. And if that's the case, then we should ask, 
what this resurrected life should look like. What kind of life will actually endure? Well, if today's scripture readings are any indication, the answer might be quite simple. It may be that we just need to return to the foundation upon which our life is built to begin with. Paul, in our well-known passage today from 1 Corinthians 13, says that that foundation is love. Anything else that we may possess, even if it's uh, some supernatural form of knowledge or some supernatural capacity for miracles, will cease. And those things won't be worth anything. In fact, we won't be worth anything if we don't have love. Paul says that love never fails. And that in the end, only three things are perfect enough to endure. Faith, hope, and love. But among these three, Paul says, the greatest is love. So our new life, if it is to be more than just the normal old life, must be rooted in what endures, which is love. I think we've seen a glimpse of that during this time of separation from those we know and love. We've appreciated all the more how much they mean to us and how little everything else matters by comparison. That's especially the case this Mother's Day weekend when many of us still can't celebrate with the moms in our life in the way that we would like to. But again, we are hoping that that will change soon. Actually, it just so happens that right after this Mother's Day weekend, I'll be traveling up to Virginia with a couple of my boys to help my mom move down here to Leesburg. We've opened up this, uh, they've opened the states up enough for us to be able to do that now. So we're certainly in preparation for a new way of life in our household. This new normal that is coming can become a life of resurrection but only if it stands on the foundation that will last, the foundation of love. But just so we don't misunderstand what that kind of love is, we need to know that we're not talking about human emotion or a human invention. The only enduring love that there is, is God's love, because God himself is love. So if we want to know what love really is, then we need to look at God, and we need to look at the one that he sent to manifest his love. In today's gospel lesson from John 14, Jesus tells his disciples that he is going ahead of them to prepare a place for them. To the rest of the world, what was about to transpire would look like defeat. To his disciples, it would seem as if they had just descended into the darkest tunnel from which they would never come out. But in reality, Jesus was going to go through that tunnel of death for them. He was going to lead them out of it, back to his father's house. His father's house was a place with many dwelling places, and there would be room enough for everybody. He would lay down his life for them out of his love, and out of his love, he would come back for them. In the meantime, he told his disciples to abide in his love. He told them, by this shall everyone know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. People would come to recognize that his love is the one thing that endures forever because it's God's love and God's love cannot die. I'm certainly looking forward to my mom moving down here to be near our family and starting her new life with us. I suppose it's a bit like what Jesus said to his disciples about preparing a place for them so that where he was, they might be also. Although I should note that uh, we did not prepare a place for my mom. She purchased it for herself. <laughs> But even with our family's reunion with my mom and with every reunion here and now, it can only be a foreshadowing of what will endure. We can't settle for
for the old normal life. We have to look to the foundation that will never fail. Jesus laid down his life for us, and he promises to come back for us. We're preparing for the new normal, and the new normal is founded on his love, which brings us to the new resurrected life, because he himself is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
The prayers of the people will be led by Gideon Williams. Prayers of the People, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they, they may be delivered from, from their distress. Give to the departed and eternal rest let light perpetual shine upon them we praise for your saints who have entered into joy may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom let us pray for our own needs and those of others for our special needs and concerns today we lift up cheryl purcell judy cable Janet Davis, Nancy Boyer, and Dot Vetter. And we also give thanks for those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Jim Gustafson, Ivy Young, Anne Bernardi, Father Bill Boyer, Gretchen Gray, Father Charles Hay, Paul Motto, Shirley Dunn, and Rebecca Hill. And we give the thanks for those who are celebrating the anniversary of their marriage this week especially Paul and Charlie Smigel, John and Debbie McIntyre, Thomas and Mary Grizzard, and Ted and Patty Wolf. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. <laughs> peace, everyone. Peace. <laughs> and a peace to... Uh, all of you out there worshiping with us today. Again, uh, we really do uh, enjoy and appreciate your, your feedback that you uh, offer to us, and we continue to uh, welcome that. We do also uh, greatly appreciate you know, the sacrifice of giving that you continue to make here at St. James, and, um, and uh, I want to again thank you for that. Again, ways to give to St. James, you can mail it to our church address, that's 204 North Lee Street here in Leesburg, uh, 34748. You can come and simply drop uh, off your gift at the office too and just put it in the door slot um, if it's not during church hours. You can also give through PayPal on our church website account, or you can set up a, a payment plan with your bank's ePay system. Again, uh, we really do uh, thank you for your ongoing sacrifice of giving to St. James. We do invite you also to continue joining us for online discipleship. Uh, we have more options for our uh, adult Sunday school class, uh, more classes on the 39 articles cl uh, uh, class that I'm going through called The Faith That We Confess. 
Uh, the latest one ought to be a very interesting one. It's on the descent of Christ into hell. Uh, uh, that had a lot of discussion when, he had, when we had it in person. So uh, I invite you to look that one up and uh, also invite you to uh, join Beth and her focus on the Inside uh, Facebook page that is by invitation uh, for privacy purposes. But uh, if you'd like to be part of it, uh, please contact Beth. You can uh, inbox her and, uh, and you'll be invited to be part of that. And we also are, are grateful for Susie Brewer continuing to uh, meet with uh, our teens by way of Zoom. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there, there might be light at the end of the tunnel uh, in terms of this time of separation. Uh, and uh, the decision for that is to be made by our bishop, Bishop Brewer. He has indicated that he will notify us by May 15th what his decision is about the possibility of opening in the near future. He, uh, the one thing we do know is that it will not be before Memorial Day weekend, but it could possibly be after that. And then there'll uh, be some uh, guidelines in place about uh, when and how to do that and, and, uh, and what attendance uh, guidelines there will be. So stay tuned for that and I'll, I'll let you know as soon as we do find out. Well, let us now uh, say together the words that our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Now our final hymn will be uh, hymn number 525, the church's one foundation, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.